Let's go ahead and rip this exponential hole open. <laughs> Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. It's once again time for Papa Flammy's random OIAAAA. Oh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. In today's video, I would like to provide you with a proof for the irrationality of the number e. And we are going to derive our main actor, our main boy for today, in a second. But at first I would like to take a look at one of many definitions of the exponential function. So the exponential function of some complex number set can also be written as e to the set. That's something that's well known. But also you can write this expression in form of a Taylor series, namely the sum going from k equals to zero to infinity, so some random infinity boy, of z to the kth power over k factorial. So this right here is the definition of the exponential function. But keep in mind, this right here is exactly a sum. So what we can do, we can split this infinite sum up into partial sums. So that means we could take a first sum going from k equals to zero to n, for example, just some natural number, and then we can complete the series by adding a second series going from k equals to n plus 1 to infinity of z to the kth power over k factorial. And this thing right here, it's not an animal, but it still has a tail. So this right here is the tail with a little index of n because we stopped at n and then we move forward of this complex number z right here. And before getting started with the real irrationality proof of the number e, I would like to prove something that has to do with the tail. I hope you guys agree with me that the number one, so that's our main actor today, exponential function of one is just e, is indeed less or equal to one plus n over two. So you can prove this by induction or something, but when n is just a natural number, if you plug in zero, it's just one, it's indeed greater or equal to one, and if you go on, if you go higher, you are always adding higher terms, so that holds. And if this relationship right here indeed holds, you can also prove this for random absolute values of complex numbers right here, then for the tail of one, we can say that it is less or equal to um, two times one to the n plus one power over n plus one factorial. So that's something we want to show in the first step. It might seem counterintuitive, but it's very helpful when dealing with the real proof. So how could we proceed with the first part? Well, we want to show something that involves the tail of this exponential series at the point z equals to one. So why not just plug the definition for the tail in and see what we get? Maybe that's something we could do. So the tail of one. It's nothing but the sum going from k equals to n plus one, don't forget the definition, to infinity of one to the kth power over k factorial. And I'm going to include the powers of one right here. I know they are just one all the time when there are real powers up there, but never mind, we are going to leave it in for the proof. And now we could expand this right here. We could write it out and see what we get. So this is equal to the first part, so one to the n plus one power over n plus one factorial plus one to the n plus two power over n plus two factorial. And we could go on and on. Maybe we have some middle piece. So one to the nth power, where m is just a natural number and it's strictly greater than n in that case, over m factorial. And then it goes on and on and on up until infinity. Oh my goodness, my poor watch. <laughs> okay. What can we do next? Well, we want to show that this thing right here is indeed less or equal to this term. And by God, we have this one to the n plus one power over n plus one factorial term right here and there. So why not factor it out and see what we get? So we end up with one to the n plus one power over n plus one factorial times. So the first part is just one. We are going to reduce the factorials and the um, 
powers by n plus 1. So that means we end up with plus 1 to the first power over n plus 2 plus dot 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 plus and then 1 to the m minus n minus 1 power over m and then m minus 1 dot 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 up until n plus 2 and adding infinitely more terms to it. Now this proof seems to come to a halt, because what could we do now? Maybe we could take a look at this approximation right here. I mean, it's not there for nothing. It has a purpose, I guess. So um, let's write it here. Let's write it out once again. So we have 1 is less or equal to um, 1 plus n over 2. We can rewrite this 1 as 2 over 2 and bring those fractions together. So 2 plus n over 2. And since n is just a natural number, it's not going to be equal to zero up here in this numerator. That means we can divide by this whole numerator. So that also means that one half is greater or equal to one over two plus n. And that's nice. So if you take a look here, one is indeed less or equal than one half to the zero of power. This thing right here is exactly this estimation we just derived. So this is going to be less or equal to one half to the first power. More and more terms are coming. You can try it out for the next term if you want, but now we are here. That does look weird. So at first, mm, you, you see we have one to the m minus n minus one power. And we want to ex express it with this right here. Does this even hold for this power? So let's, for example, um, raise both sides to the power of m minus n minus 1. That would be an idea. So that means 1 half to the m minus n minus 1 power is greater or equal to <coughs> 1 to the m minus n minus 1 power over n plus 2 to the very same power. Okay. And as you might know, if you apply powers to big numbers down here, this denominator is just going to explode. That means we are getting a really big denominator down here. And that means this fraction is going to be really small. But if we take a look at here, we are just adding some random numbers together, not adding, multiplying. So that means the denominator on this one isn't going to be as great as this denominator right here. So what you can conclude in the first step is that this thing right here is less than this right here because if the denominator isn't that big that means the fraction is um, bigger you could say the number is going to be greater than the other one so that also means that 1 to the m minus n minus 1 power over m times m minus 1 times dot 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 times n plus 2 is indeed greater or equal to 1 to the m minus n minus 1 power over n plus 2 to the m minus n minus 1 power. And you can try it out for the, uh, I don't know, for the third member or something and you see that this is indeed true. But on the other hand, we have this 1 half to the something power. And 2 is a pretty small number. And if we raise it to a big power, it's still not going to grow as fast as this right here. Um, just try it out for yourself. So what we can also conclude is that this thing right here is going to be greater or equal to this. So that means we have this triangle right here. And there's a certain thing in analysis you can conclude, you can prove, if this term right here is bigger than this, and also this term is bigger than this one, we can also conclude that the first term is indeed greater or equal to the last term. So that's something that holds. Our big conclusion in this case is just that this thing right here is greater or equal to one half to the m minus n minus one power. And we are doing this infinitely many times with all the natural numbers in there. So we can plug this estimation in. So at first we have this term, one to the n plus one power over n plus one factorial. And also we're having this infinite series right here from, I don't know, L equals to zero to infinity of powers of one half. One half to the elf power. But we know exactly what this is, since one half 
is strictly less than 1, so it's between 1 and 0. This thing actually converges, that's a geometric series. So this thing right here is just 1 over 1 minus 1 half. This is 1 over 1 half, this is going to be 2. So what we end up with is just 2 times 1 to the n plus 1 power over n plus 1 factorial. And that's indeed what we wanted to show. So we want to show that the tail of 1 is indeed less or equal to that thing right here. Let's place a black boy here and let's go ahead and get started with the real proof of the rationality of E. Let's go ahead and rip this exponential hole open. <laughs> so we want to show that the number E is indeed irrational. But what does that also mean? Well, we can also do a proof by contradiction and say that, or we can suppose, that E is rational. Because if we can find a contradiction on the statement right here, so prove that this, in, this is indeed false, then it also means that the original statement that E is irrational is going to be true. Mathematical logic, easy one. So what does it mean for E to be rational? Well, we can express E as some, I don't know, P over Q for example, where P and Q are going to be integers. But I want to place a little restriction on Q right here, so we want P to be element of the integers, but I want q without any loss of generality to be greater or equal to 2. You will see later why I'm doing this. And you can still con construct with this restriction on q all the rational numbers. So it does work. Try it out for yourself. Construct all the rational numbers. Have fun doing infinitely many things. So q is going to be greater or equal to 2 without loss of generality. Okay, so this is great. Um, what about multiplying q factorial by e? That's just what we are going to do now. So that's the main proof, that's the classical one. So q factorial times e, that's what, we, uh, that's what we want to explore now. So we can use the definition of our e and plug it in. So that means that q factorial times p over q is, well, Q and Q factorial cancel out, kind of. We are going to end up with Q minus 1 factorial times P. And you see, this thing is element of the integers. This thing is element of the integers. So the product is also going to be element of the integers. So that's a nice observation. So on the left-hand side, we have an element of the integers. But what's on the right-hand side? Well. We know our definition for e, and we also know that we can split it up into two partial sums, including the tail of e. So what we can do, we can split this e up into q factorial times a sum going from k equals to 0 to q, for example. Since q is element of natural numbers, integers right here, natural numbers is a subset of the integers, we can also just go to the q step in the series right here. And we are dealing with the exponential function of 1, so we are having a 1 to the kth power up here over k factorial. And adding a tail to it, plus q factorial times the tail. And this time with a q down here, not with an n, because we ended at the q step in that case of 1. So let's take a look at this right here. Let's, let's write it out a little bit. So q factorial times this sum right here, 1 to the k power over k factorial, k equals to 0 to q. We can write this out. So let's write some terms out. So at first we have q factorial over 0 factorial, it's just q factorial. Same thing here, q factorial. And the next one is going to be q factorial over 2 factorial, plus dot dot dot, and up until q factorial over q factorial. Well, this right here is just going to be 1. What is this right here? This right here is going to be q times q minus 1 times dot 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 times 4 times 3. As you might notice, this first one is element of the integers. The second one is element of the integers. The third one is element of the integers. Blah, blah, blah. Many, many times. Q steps. And then 1 is indeed element of the integers. So we have a sum of integer values that's also element of the integers. So what we can conclude? that this whole thing right here is element of the integers. That's a lot of repeating. But I have a point here because on the left hand side we have an integer. So we must have an integer on the right hand side. Since one part of the sum is also an integer, that means the second part of the sum also needs to be an integer. 
So that's something we can conclude. So that's our big conclusion at this point right here. Q factorial times the tail of Q, this time 1, is element of the integers. But now let's observe this right here a little bit more. As you might notice, we're having Q factorial here. That means we have 2 times 3 times 1 times 4, etc. So that's already greater than 0. And the tail, we are adding more and more positive terms to it. So that means that thing is strictly greater than 0. So we don't have a 0 in here. That also means that this thing right here, Q factorial times the tail, Q of 1, is strictly greater than 0. Can we find another estimation? Another approximation. Well, the thing is, we know what the tail of 1 is less or equal to. Don't forget, we have the fact that um, this right here holds. And now we can replace those n's by q's right here. So that's something that holds. So that means this thing right here is indeed less or equal to 2 times, and now we have 1 to the something power, it doesn't matter, it's just 1, 1 over q plus 1 factorial times q factorial. We can expand this a little bit. q factorial and q plus 1 factorial is going to cancel each other out and we are just going to end up with 1 over q plus 1. So this is just 2 over q plus 1. And here's why I placed the restriction on q being greater or equal to 2 because, well, the least value of q is 2. So this is going to be 2 thirds. For example, if we plug in 3, that's going to be 2 over 4. This is 1 half. And if we plug in higher and higher values for q, we are always going to end up with something that's strictly less than 1. So this thing is at least less or equal to 2 thirds, since we have this restriction down here, and this is less than 1. That's weird. We have assumed that this thing right here is element of the integers, but now we are told that this thing right here is between 0 and 1, which makes it a fraction, element of the rational numbers. What you can conclude that q factorial times the tail of 1 is element of the rational numbers, but it can't be this at the same time. So that means we are landing at a little contradiction right here. And since we contradicted our statement that E is rational, which was a contradiction, uh, a, a contraposition, I don't know if it's called like this in English. That means that E is indeed irrational. We can't express it as a um, rational function, as a fraction. And that's it. We've done it, placing the chart here. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend me if you like. I hope you're enjoying this series so far. I'm in this Pop of Lemmy's Random Week. And well, if you want to support me a bit more, link to my Patreon is in the description. And up until the next video, have a flamble day. See ya.